I was first appointed uh, citizen advocate, the first one in the state. Uh, I traveled full time with the governor. I was a uh, constant aide there. Uh, that was for the first four years, from 72 to 76. From 76 to 1980, I was appointed director of the Department of Business Regulation. And <clears throat> as part of that role I played, I was superintendent of state banks and financial institutions and chairman of the state banking board. Okay, the bank was uh, chartered in 1974 and the president was a gentleman named Les Sage. Uh, Les had a lot of friends in town and he made them all loans, mostly unsecured, and that was the problem. Uh, so over many years, there were a ton of underperforming and non-performing loans in the bank and impossible to collect on because there was no collateral. Things were so bad that as superintendent of banks, chief bank examiner, I had to call the board over to Helena to my office on two different occasions to sit them down and raise a little hell with them, quite frankly, to get them to contribute more capital to the bank and to clean up their loan portfolios. Uh, I could have closed them based on the evidence at that time. Uh, Les was not a good uh, manager. Uh, he got, well, the rumor is that he got caught uh, in his office after a three martini lunch with his secretary and, and so he was gone. One of many presidents, uh, almost all of whom had some kind of management trouble during their tenure. One of them ended up in federal prison, as a matter of fact, for embezzling from the bank. Uh, not, during, not during the time I was there, thank Lord, but anyway. I had many friends in Missoula at the time, even though I, I'm in Helena, 10 years in state government. And so I called uh, several of them and I said, what uh, is going on with that bank? Why can't they get their act together? And um, I never really got a satisfactory answer, but I didn't close them down, which I easily could have. That's number one. Uh, and that, uh, that was, uh, I guess, the end of that four-year period that I was chief bank examiner, essentially. Then uh, phase two. Phase two is uh, when I moved to Missoula in 1985, I was actually hired by the bank as a commercial loan officer and the chief investment officer, okay? So it was my job to uh, handle trades for bank clients, uh, to uh, take care of uh, smaller commercial loan clients, and to try to collect on a lot of those old bad debts. And I had, you know, sheets like this of names that I was using to every day to try to collect on, and with very little success because there was no collateral. So uh, <clears throat> during that year, however, uh, were possibly the worst of times for the bank. We had an ineffective president. The FDIC called us and said, we're gonna be there in 15 minutes to lock your doors, you're done. So it was up to me at that point to get on the phone and try to find hot money anywhere in the United States I could find it. And most of it came out of Florida. And we did that because that was the only way to raise capital for liquidity because we had no liquidity at that point. This happened twice. The first time the FDIC gave us 15 minutes and 
I was scrambling to to get some of those giant CDs in our portfolio. Um, bank officers were doing everything they could, but we just we didn't have time to get any more capital in, so that's the only way we could get liquidity. Okay. Uh, the second time around in 1985, the Federal Reserve came in with their examiners, and they gave us three hours that day to get more capital, get more liquidity, show them how we were working on those bad loans and we were able to keep the doors open again. So, uh, but that was really, uh, those were scary times. It was nip and tuck, keeping the doors from being locked. So, uh, and it wasn't any fun either. <laughs> that wasn't any fun at all. Uh, that was the second go around with the bank. The third go around was, uh, <coughs> When I, uh, when when my wife and I and another couple started a business, a vocational rehabilitation business in Missoula, with offices throughout the state, we uh, <coughs> applied for an SBA loan through Hal Frazier, who I had worked with previously at the bank, and so we were best of friends. Uh, aside from his being our banker, uh, he went to work and applied for, for an SBA loan for us. Uh, we got turned down. Well, now what are we going to do? Because we've got these seven offices and we've already hired employees. So he went back to work for us and we were able to come up with a little more collateral. And, and so that, that did the trick. And, and we got our SBA loan, thanks to Hal. Okay. And I can say, in all honesty, that I'm just one of probably hundreds of businesses in and around Missoula that he helped in similar ways. I can't overestimate the impact that Hal had on this community. He's a wonderful, wonderful person. Gentleman that the... Uh, that the federal examiners brought in was a, was a gentleman by the name of John, whatever his last name is, and I can't remember it, but uh, he came in and he, specifically to clean the bank up. So he was responsible for getting rid of just a ton of those bad loans, just a ton, you know, taking the write offs if they needed to, uh, firing accounts getting them out of the bank, don't want to bank with you any longer. Uh, and he had a major role to play in, in cleaning the bank up. Then Bill came in and took over and started his tenure uh, hiring really good people, keeping the best people like Hal Frazier, uh, <clears throat> and, and really getting the bank up and rolling at that point. He, uh, uh, he's kind of a no-bones kind of guy. He's not going to put up with any uh, funny business at all. And Bill and I, you know, became very good friends. 